Here we can look at uh, optical isomerism, which is a type of stereoisomerism. So remember that stereoisomerism is molecules with the same structural formula, but different arrangements in space of some atoms. Now, optical isomerism occurs when we have a carbon with four different groups attached. So I'm going to draw an example here. Now, because we're looking at spatial arrangements of atoms, we need to draw molecules with wedged and dashed bonds. Now, remember that a wedge bond shows a bond coming out towards the plane. A dashed bond shows a bond that's going behind the plane. And also these bonds that are just a, a line is in the same plane as each other or is in the plane. So we've got a molecule here and the molecule is, if you look at it, we've got our longest carbon chain is three, numbering it with the carboxylic acid carbon as a number one. And we've got a OH group, um, an alcohol group on carbon two. Uh, the alcohols are low priority, so that's a prefix, which is hydroxy. So we've got two hydroxy propanoic acid. And that is a molecule that exhibits optical isomerism because it has a carbon here with four different groups attached. And that carbon has got a very special name. That is called a chiral carbon. So that is the structural feature that you're looking for when molecules exhibit optical isomerism. It has to have this thing called a chiral carbon. What we're going to do now is draw the two different isomers of 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. So let's draw 2-hydroxypropanoic acid again. <clears throat> and what we're going to draw, the optical isomer of this is in fact a mirror image. So the good idea is to draw like an imaginary line going down here. And imagine that is our mirror. And we can see here that the COH group here is close to the mirror on the left. So it'll also be close to the mirror on the right. So we've got my COH group there. That's my chiral carbon and my CH3 remains unchanged. Now... Any group or any group attached to the bond going behind the plane, and the hydroxide ion in this case, will also be going behind the, going behind the plane in the mirror image as well. Anything attached to the bond coming out of the plane, in this case the hydrogen, will also be coming out of the plane in the mirror image. So those two there are optical isomers. They are mirror images and what we call non-superimposable mirror images of each other. So these are optical isomers and optical isomers have a very special name. Optical isomers are also called enantiomers. So if you ever hear the word enantiomers, we are just talking about optical isomers. Now, these optical isomers um, will have the same physical properties, same boiling points, same melting points. They'll also chemically react in almost exactly the same way as well. So how do we differentiate between the two? We do that by using something called a polarimeter. Polarimeter firstly contains a light source. And light travels in 
various different directions. And then what we do is we shine this light source through a something called a polarizing filter. What that does, it, it, it means that the light will now only shine in one direction. And we call that the pl a plane of polarized light. And that is light that's just shining in one direction. When this plane of polarized light shines through a sample, which is basically a solution containing an optical isomer. Let's imagine that I've got this optical isomer, this optical isomer only here in my sample tube, which is a plastic or glass vessel. The plane of polarized light is rotated either to the left. Or to the right. So here, P or PL, plane of polarized light, rotates, or rotated to the left. The other optical isomer, the other enantiomer, if you've got the same concentration of both, will rotate that plane of polarized light in equal but opposite direction. So that rotates it in equal but opposite direction. So here, the plane of polarized light is rotated to the right. So one enantiomer, for example, this one, rotate the plane of polarized light to the left. The other enantiomer, for example, this one, rotate it to the right. And if the concentrations, the amounts, for example, of, of each are equal, they'll be rotated in equal but opposite directions. What do I mean by that? Well, it means that the angle of rotation here will be exactly the same. If I then mix together these two enantiomers, so in my vessel here I've got a mixture now of both of these enantiomers, an equal mixture of both these enantiomers, what do we think would happen to the plane of polarized light? Well, what happens is that the effect of one will cancel the effect of the other and there's no effect on the plane of polarized light. We get something which appears to be something called optically inactive. And optically inactive, um, if something is optically inactive, that is, this thing in here is optically inactive, it can appear optically inactive for one of two reasons. One is that you've got an equal amount of both of these enantiomers. And that is something called a racemic mixture. So, racemic mixture, you've got equal amounts of both enantiomers. It may also appear optically inactive because the compound does not contain a chiral carbon. So there's two possible reasons why you might get an optically inactive result when you put a sample into polarimeter. It may be, appear optically inactive because the compound that is in your polarimeter here doesn't contain a chiral carbon, it's not going to rotate the plane of polarized light, but it may also appear optically inactive because you've got this thing called a racemic mixture, which is an equal amount of both enantiomers.
So the polarimeter, what it does, it allows you to distinguish between um, enantiomers because the enantiomers will rotate the plane of polarized light in equal but opposite directions. But remember, if you've got a mixture, an equal mixture of both enantiomers, it will appear optically inactive because the effect of one enantiomer cancels the effect of the other. And that is optical isomerism.